with all not your truth or kindness, Lord. With all not your truth or kindness, Lord. Welcome to The Notice, where together we notice the mercy of God. I'm Susan Hookstra, your host. The Notice Podcast explores our need for validation and affirmation through biblical musings and conversations with special guests, experience relevant topics, and encouragement as we take notice of how the God of mercy satisfies. On this episode of The Notice, as 2022 ends and 2023 begins, It often causes us to stop and reflect. Yes, reflect on what's happened, but also reflect on what we hope will happen. On this episode of The Notice, we will talk about how important reflection is, how we sometimes try to avoid it, and also ways we can change our attitude towards it. Listen in as we take notice of God through reflection. Happy New Year, podcast family. I trust you had a wonderful Christmas. Looking back on 2022, I am beyond grateful for what God has brought into our lives. And I'm excited about 2023. And I guess that's the part of New Year's Eve that I enjoy the most. Reflection. To reflect on the year and to set goals for the future. After all, isn't reflection the key to taking notice, and then there's spiritual reflection for us Christian believers, which is the process of thinking, pondering, or reflecting on biblical teaching, scriptures, or sermons. Psalm 119.15 tells us, I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. Yet our culture encourages us to never slow down, We were busy as a badge of honor. Although COVID seemed to have slowed us down, maybe a little, even the church has adopted culture's norms. We run from meeting to meeting discussing the latest in spiritual disciplines, as if they're something new. We keep ourselves busy running activities and programs, wanting to attract others to the church. But do we want them to come to our church or come to Jesus? think about it. Just contemplating that question requires reflection. Reflection requires us to stop and think, you know, be still. Reflection allows us to keep spiritual things in the forefront of our minds. And if we reflect daily on what God is doing and has done in our lives, it allows us to rest in his presence. And it's his presence which brings us healing. Unfortunately, many Christians know what it means to come to faith, but they don't experience this deep relationship with Jesus. How do we help them get started? Psalm 139, 23 through 24 tells us, Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Well, according to this verse, it seems reflection may mean being open to correction. So perhaps that's why we try to avoid it. Both busyness and mind-numbing activities are one way we avoid self-reflection. I'm sure there's been times you've kept yourself busy to avoid relationship troubles, or perhaps you've plopped yourself in front of the TV or played games on your computer just to zone out. I get it. Reflection can be challenging, and for some, it causes anxiousness. For many people, the most dreadful thing in the world is to sit by themselves quietly. I've also seen a mindset of consumer Christianity, where attendees come to a small group looking to receive. But when the focus of the group starts to become one of reflection, these individuals eventually leave. Perhaps it's because when the environment is quiet, their minds automatically begin reflecting on things they've experienced. 
maybe good experiences and bad experiences, valuable experience and worthless experiences. In this mad, mad world of sin, we either end up feeling unworthy or just don't want to be reminded that we are. Being silent can feel very loud. And for you introverts out there, I get it. It's a daunting prospect to share your reflections. Yet there's some things that happen if we don't reflect. Four things come to mind. One, lack of growth. Lack of reflection may lead us to be caught up in the vicious cycle between childhood and maturity. At first, I guess this might seem appealing. After all, who doesn't want that childlike innocence? But when you think about it, imagine a 40-year-old with a receding hairline and a beer belly acting like an 18-year-old. I think we can agree it's not a pretty sight. Reflection allows us to grow. Two, lack of connection. Reflection is what connects us to others and to God. Without it, we are not vulnerable, which is the gateway to true connection. Three, lack of direction. Reflection allows us to analyze where things went well and where things got off course. Reflection is the gateway to wisdom, and wisdom is our direction. Lack of focus. Without reflection, other symptoms may may appear. Irritability, frustration, impatience, and the like show up. We end up tending to those symptoms rather than the root cause if we don't reflect. Friends, reflection also helps us to live out this command. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Remember, three key relationships are discussed in this verse. One is relationship with God, two is relationship with others, and three is relationship with self. Perhaps that's where we want to start our reflection. On, reflect on God, with, reflect with others, about, reflect about self. I don't think it's always about sitting in a room being quiet. So let's take a little detour and visit with some of our friends who's in scripture who modeled some reflection. There's Joseph, the son of Jacob, who was betrayed by his brothers, beaten and sold as a slave to a foreign nation and carried away to a faraway country where he did not know the people, language or customs. He was all by himself until his master's wife solicited him to sleep with her. He, he then refused and ended up in prison because she lied about their encounter. Things were not looking good for Joseph at all. It was one disaster after another. Yet while in prison, God continued to bless Joseph. He continually rose to leadership roles, becoming the manager of the prison while a prisoner. While there, he interpreted a dream for a fellow prisoner who was also a servant of Pharaoh. Eventually, that servant told the Pharaoh about Joseph, and he began interpreting Pharaoh's dreams. He ended up rising up to the highest position in Egypt. He predicted a famine, and Joseph's family came to Egypt not knowing he was there. They thought he was dead, and he ended up saving his family and all of Egypt from the famine. In the scriptures, you can see how much Joseph reflected on what God was doing. In one of the most reflective statements uttered in scriptures, he told them in Genesis 50, 20, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring it about as it is this day to save many people alive. The trouble and pain were now insignificant when he reflected on how God's goodness came to him, his family, and all of Egypt through them. Another great example of reflection in the Bible is David, the prophet and king. The Psalms alone show us David's reflection about the broad range of human experiences, joy, anger, fear, grief, depression, anxiety, 
and appreciation. And he saw the hand of God in all of it. He also brought God into all these experiences by talking to him about all these things. When I'm working with someone who's going through a tough time, I often encourage them to read the Psalms. They have not only served as comforters in times of grief, but also teachers showing us how to lament, worship, pray, training our minds to grow through that reflection. Try reading the Psalms slowly and train your minds to reflect about your experiences in the same way the Psalms do by asking yourself these questions. One, have I gone through something like what this Psalm describes before? How does the Psalm address these issues? How can I apply what it prescribes? What good things have I learned have resulted from these bad experiences? If I am patient, will I succeed? Then there's David's son Solomon, who wrote many works showing deep reflection. Song of Songs reflects about youthful love, which is also on a deeper level an allegory of our relationship with God. Proverbs reflects about human relationships, whether it is between parents and children, brothers, husbands and wives, friends, and even colleagues. Ecclesiastes reflects about the emptiness of most things in life. It may appear a little cynical, but it does get us to think on a deeper level. Although self-reflection is implied in all of these examples, reflection doesn't have to be done alone. It's good to reflect with your spouse, your children, your church family, your small group. On, with, about. So now that we understand what not reflecting can do, what reflection can look like, let's talk about the real reason behind reflection. Friends, reflecting allows us to reflect God. When you practice reflection, you will grow to become a true reflection of Christ, just like a mirror reflects an image. This is called the likeness of Christ. We will radiate this to others just like a mirror may radiate the warmth of the image it is reflecting. We can bring the depths of love and the love of Christ to the world. Psalm 24, 3 states, Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. So as you reflect on God, may you reflect with others and learn more about yourself. I can't wait to see you radiate his presence to others in 2023 and beyond. So in the spirit of reflection, I'm reflecting about my podcast. I've asked God if he wants me to continue and the answer was yes. I reflected with others and recognized that I either have to go big or go home. I reflected about myself and my time commences, and I admit I struggle to get all of this done. I am hoping that 2023 will be the year for a new listening audience to emerge. So if you have ideas or hopes about what direction you'd like to see the notice go, please be sure to email me with your ideas at susan at susankhoekster.com. All this reflection will help me grow, connect, get direction, and stay focused. I look forward to some exciting podcasts during 2023 with authors, pastors, ministry leaders, and creatives. And as always, thank you for listening. Until next time, take notes. to